I'm on my way. Freedom land. My man, we were determined to keep the dream alive. Make some noise. I want to thank Representative Sequis and Pettigrew for coming here today uh, to be with us. They are the representatives of the people, and the best way to represent the people is to be present with the people. And I want to know where the other representatives are. They are absent without leave on today. Yes! Whenever the representatives of the people are not present with the people, when the people's backs are against the wall, rest assured their very absence is a symbol of the fact that they left the fight for the people a long time ago. So put your hands together for those who are here, whose very presence means something. Today the nation pauses to reflect upon, to remember the life, the work, the death, and the legacy of the one American for whom we have committed a legal holiday and a national day of commemoration. And in so doing, the Martin Luther King Jr. National Holiday serves as an annual checkup on the health and the well-being of the nation insofar as her commitment to civil rights human rights, racial justice, and becoming a more perfect union is concerned. And we've gathered here today from every background, every hue, every race, every religion, to say that it is our collective conclusion that whereas we have come a long way, we still have a long way to go. Amen. Today we launch at once on this day of anti-poverty lobbying, also the racial justice report card against the backdrop of the King holiday, because the King holiday in itself is symbolic of the awareness that any conversation about racial justice has at once to be a conversation about economic justice. There is no conversation about one without the other. They have always come together. Yes. There is no conversation about gender discrimination without a conversation about racial discrimination. Yes. There is no conversation about immigration legislation without talking about economic discrimination. Yes. Slavery was a racial injustice. It was also an economic injustice. Separating people from the fruits of their labor and systematically displacing that wealth to another, to underdevelop one and hyperdevelop another. Segregation was a racial injustice as well as an economic injustice. Discrimination against women in the workforce is a gender injustice as well as an economic injustice. Yes. The mistreatment of undocumented persons who have picked our lettuce and our beans and our apples, changed our beds and our hotels, flipped our burgers, cleaned out the dung troughs at our racetracks paid under the table less than minimum wages without benefits to push prices down and cost others jobs. It is both an ethnic and racial discrimination and an economic discrimination. So we're here today because we get it as we celebrate the birthday of a man who's lived and died to reconstitute American society on a broader base of liberty. A man who, when an assassin's bullet silenced his tongue forever, he was in the midst of a campaign down in Memphis to provide a 10 cent an hour wage increase for 1,300 black garbage workers who suffered the indignity of racial and economic discrimination at once and who was in the midst of planning a poor people's campaign. For June of 1968, that was to bring poor blacks, poor whites, poor Chicanos, poor Native Americans, poor Latinos, poor of every background, to the nation's capital and shut down its operations in an act of civil disobedience 
until the representatives and the officials of the greatest nation the world has ever seen dealt with the problem of contrived poverty that did not have to be. And now here we are, it's almost a half a century later, still wrestling with the question of when will we have the political will and the moral rectitude to eliminate poverty in this country once and for all. And in, in the midst of this economic downturn and this wartime economy, our values are what is on trial. History is the story of the fact. Empire after empire has imploded, not fallen to the swords and the tanks of outside empires, but fallen to their own confused values that began when they began putting more emphasis on bombs than bread, more emphasis upon conquering others than raising up their own people. Martin King saw any nation that year after year spends more money on weapons of war than on programs of social uplift is a nation that is fast approaching spiritual death. And so here we are at another moral crossroads, tempted to balance the budget on the backs of the poor. We call on our governor, who has been a good steward and an advocate for the last and the least, to be even more a champion and a drum major, a drum major who would restore the housing trust fund so that Washingtonians, whatever their background, can have a safe and clean domicile in which to live. It is a basic human right. We call on our governor and our legislators to protect the income supports for working families who are a few dollars away from being from the tipping point to join the swelling ranks of the homeless who need not a handout but a hand up. Yes. We call on our legislators to expand access to health care, to establish it once and for all as a basic human right. We call on our representatives to represent us and to put money into schools and kids and neighborhoods and to build this nation from the bottom up and not hold it hostage from the top down. So we've come here today once again to challenge this nation to choose to be a moral nation. Moral in terms of not how it capitulates to the strong and the powerful, but how it advocates for the last and for the least. The moral arc of the universe is still long, but it still bends toward justice. And let this Washington, which has so often been ahead of the curve and seen the moral light, while the rest of the nation lagged behind. Let this Washington be a model for the other Washington. Let this Washington tell the other Washington, don't balance the budget on the backs of the poor. Amen. Let this Washington tell the other Washington, health care has to be a natural right. Let this Washington tell the other Washington that we need bread and not bombs. Let this Washington Tell the other Washington, it is still government for the people, by the people, and of the people. Yeah. Let this Washington tell the other Washington that it is much as you do it to the least. That is the only way you serve God and history. The other Washington may be the nation's capital, but this Washington has always been the nation's conscious. So let this Washington send another clear message to the other Washington that God of history has still something. That shall never call retreat. He's still sifting out the hearts of men beneath his judgment seat. And all oh, be swift our souls to answer him. Be jubilant our feet. God's truth still marches on. God bless you and may the dream still live.